Hello, everyone. Welcome again to another Word for Today with Ray. What a blessing it is every single day to be able to study the Word of God together. I pray that it's becoming a habit for you. One of the greatest habits you can ever have is studying God's Word every day, adding what He has to say to your life. I promise you, not only will you begin to know God better, but you'll also find that your life is constantly dependent upon God and that your life is different as you cast your worries and carries over onto him because he knows that you care for him. Uh, you care for him and he cares for you. And so we always go to him in prayer as we begin our study. So if you will, pray with me today. Heavenly Father, I give you thanks again for your word. We are so grateful for it. And I'm grateful that you desire to teach us by your Holy Spirit, by guiding us into all truth, and also, Lord, by helping us to live according to that truth. My prayer today, Lord, is that you will be blessed while we study and that you will bless us while we study as well. And we'll do these things and say these things in Jesus' name. Amen. The title to today's lesson is, Will You Hear It Again? It's taken from the book of John, chapter 9, and verse 27. John the Apostle wrote how Jesus saw a man who was born blind and healed him by making clay, anointing his eyes, and having him wash in the pool of Siloam. The blind man's neighbors brought to the Pharisees him that aforetime was blind. And it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. Then again, the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He said unto them, He put clay upon my eyes, and I washed, and do see. And therefore said some of the Pharisees, This man is not of God, because he keeps not the Sabbath day. Others said, How can a man that is a sinner do such miracles? And there was a division among them. They said unto the blind man again, What do you say of him that he has opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. But the Jews did not believe concerning him that he had been, born bl had been blind and received his sight until they called the parents of him that had received his sight. And they asked him, saying, Is this your son whom you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His par parents answered them and said, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. Or who has opened his eyes, we know not. He is of age. Ask him. He will speak for himself. These words spoke his parents because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had agreed already that if any man did confess that he was Christ, he should be put out of the synagogue. Therefore said his parents, he is of age, ask him. Then again called the man that was blind and said unto him, Give praise God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered and said, Whether he be a sinner or not, I know, I don't know. But the one thing I know is that whereas I was blind, now I see. Then said they to him again, what did he to you? How opened he your eyes? And in chapter 9 and verse 27 of his book, John shared how the blind man said to the Pharisees, I told you already and you did not hear. Wherefore will you hear it again? Where we read, he answered them, I have told you already and you did not hear. Wherefore would you hear it again? Will you also be his disciples? The verse reads, He answered them, I have told you already, and you did not hear. John began with the words, He answered them, which means the formerly blind man responded to the Pharisees, I have told you already, or I, the blind man, spoke to you previously, and you did not hear, which means and you Pharisees were not endowed with the faculty of hearing, did not perceive, understand, discover, or discern. John shared how the blind man responded to the Pharisees' question by telling them that he already answered them, and they did not perceive what he said. The verse continues, Wherefore would you hear it again? Will you also be his disciples? John added the words, Wherefore would you hear it again? Which means, why and for what reason and cause do you Pharisees desire to be endowed with the faculty of hearing, perceiving, understanding, discovering, and discerning the formerly blind man's answer another time? Will you also be his disciples? Or unless you disciples, even so and indeed, will exist as Jesus' students, pupils, and attendants? John shared how the formerly blind man wanted to know why the Pharisees would hear his story again unless they too were desiring to be Jesus' disciples. 
When we meditate upon John's words in this verse, we learn how the formerly blind man attempted to figure out why the Pharisees wanted him to tell them what Jesus did to him again. They knew, or he knew, they did not hear him the first time he told them. So he thought maybe they wanted to become Jesus' disciples by hearing it again. We shall see how they respond in our next verse, but for now, John desires every person to be his disciple through his son, Jesus. And when they yield their life to him as their personal Savior and Lord, he will forgive their sins and provide them with everlasting life. And those who are wise will carefully observe all Jesus did as the Christ in the world and submit their lives to him who gives spiritual sight to people every day. Next time, John shares how the Pharisees reviled him. So read ahead, and we shall join together then. Until tomorrow, there is more. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace as you continue to study his word. In Jesus' name.